Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Eddie Marcus, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. I want to thank you so very much for stopping here on this post. And I promise it should be worth your while. For my subject today is, here is the truth and nothing but the truth. And you know what they say about the truth. It is the truth that shall set you free. I have said it before. Now let me say it again. I've been a student of the adversary, the devil. I've been just as evil as any man. The one thing I have not done is taken a life. After God revealed God's power to me, I still served the adversary because I enjoyed doing the simple, naughty things. Many of the naughtiness I have mentioned hundreds of times on previous videos, so I won't waste your time here. Here is what is important. Forty years ago, I accepted a call God had on my life. During these 40 years, God told me the role to play and sent me into the wilderness to teach me the truth of the message I'm going to bring to the people of this country. Making money was no more of a concern to me. My business was to speak to the people about the hurt God feels at the treatment of the poor. To know this, though I had been poor most of my life, I had to get back to it, to know it again, before I could speak to it. At the time of my calling, I was married to a wonderful, beautiful lady. She wanted no part of this mission, and though we both attended church as Christians, she divorced me. I joined the Navy. During the time, Iran took American hostages in hopes of getting killed in the Persian Gulf if war started. No war. Instead, I traveled to places I never would have traveled otherwise. Soon, I recognized reasons I could not continue in the Navy and accepted an other than honorable separation and quit. I returned to my hometown, Itabena, Mississippi. Not wanting to be alone, I met a young lady, fell in love, and after about three years, we got married. I made her quite aware that I had a mission that restricted me from pursuing the normal means of success, but I would take care and support her well. We moved to Minnesota. She found employment and I began traveling across country, preaching on the streets and in churches when permitted. I did this for several months. The message I was taught and instructed to tell the Christian is that they were and are on the path to hell. They were not and are not serving God. In the late 80s, the nation was having housing problems. I advocated that the people take some God action and challenge the nation's attitude. I spent our rent money on some other project and asked my wife and our one child at the time to join me in moving on the capital steps as a family. She felt this was ludicrous and refused. My wife was not willing to support the mission I had been given. She wanted to follow the traditional path. I moved to the capital myself for about 10 days. My efforts were not having the same effect it would have had had it been a family. Let me make it clear. My wife did not desert me. She just did not understand the mission. And for the 40 years of which I speak, I only held employment for six or seven years. 
She made the money and paid for everything that had to be paid. She paid for the rent, bought the food, paid car notes, clothed the children, paid the energy bills, and paid for vacations. Had it been me, I would have sacrificed it all to do God's will. People concerned about themselves pretend they have a relationship with God and will not do it just as she wouldn't. I did the housework, raised the kids, and repaired everything. I also, however, committed crimes to prove to the Christians in court proceedings that the message I speak was legitimate, but they could not hear. And at times I resorted to doing drugs, alcohol, and women as a means of fighting off the disappointment and resisting the norms. When my conscience condemned me, I, I returned to the mission. But enough of this. I used, I used it to say that I'm not here to condemn the public, but to share the message God has sent to you, a corrupt individual as I am. God sent me. Now, back to the message. I sought the office of U.S. President three times. U.S. Senator twice, Governor of Minnesota once, Mayor of St. Paul and Woodbury, each occasion advocating as in heaven, so on earth. But you know, no Christian or church ever supported this God's message, proving they have no idea of the reality of God. America has always been somewhat fate. She was the greatest, even when she was killing the natives. And God's fake Christians were fine with this. Great when having slaves. And God's fake Christians were fine with this. A lot of bad things took place. And the media were careful to tell the people or the public what was okay to tell. The problem with Trump is, he wanted to do America in for his benefit. America's system of socioeconomics is despicable, as mentioned in many of my videos. And God's fake Christians are fine with that. But God isn't. The message is, God is real. Christianity is as fake as Santa. All of it. God is love. And as a true Christian, suffering in America is your mission to end. The leadership are charlatans, crooked as $3 bills. Identify one that is advocating as in heaven, so on earth. Now, none, not one. Not your mega churches or your small churches. They are all fake. Whether they know it or not, they all use the Bible as if God lives in a book. God is a spirit that talked to those that could hear then, and it is done today for those that can hear. Fake can't hear. I share this with you, ladies and gentlemen. All of the blanks that seems to be there for you, I got them on Facebook or YouTube. Refer to those videos if you got any questions. But the whole point is, the problems of the world, the problems of the United States exist because people do not know God. And even though you claim you do, you don't. And the evidence is in the pain and suffering that people everywhere are feeling. For God is love and anyone that is a child of God, anyone that is born again has a rejuvenated heart and there's no way you could settle back with good food, good housing, good clothes, good education, good transportation, good vacations while others are suffering. Only a fake Christian could do that. Thank you.